Hey guys, Nikki here, your lit auntie, the one that look dressed, act too young for her age, but I'm still real, real lit. And this is gonna be one of the hardest videos I've ever done. I don't know why, because it's for good reasons. But I am going to take a stroll down my YouTube memory lane. You remember when we used to always do those draw my life tags and stuff? It's sort of kind of like that, except it's all of my YouTube career. So if you're interested, please continue to watch. Okay, before I get into the video, anything that I am wearing is always linked below, right? And let's just go ahead and get this cute little bob out the way. It is from Love Me Hair and they are sponsoring this video. So let's just talk about it. <laughs> Alright guys, so let's hop straight into this bum bob bang wig. Y'all know this is my style. You guys know this is me. I love a bang wig so let's hop straight into it it came from love me hair this is the packaging right here I have reviewed for this company a few times before and I absolutely love their wigs so I'm trying something different this right here is everything that came in the box there's a card in here how you can win money off a wig or free wigs monthly you know that type of thing of course the wig is in here there's a bag in case you don't want to use the box to store it in you always have a bag to put it in when you're not wearing it here's an edge brush slash comb we love those here's an edge band i'm not gonna need that here's a rat tail comb the new kind that got the parting comb at the top Love their color, of course. Here's HD wig caps. I love these wig caps, but I'm not going to wear it today. A brochure. And I love this. You can label your wig because, child, I have a lot of wigs. And I have to open every box to figure out which one it is. So this is what the wig looked like. Real scalp-like, right? This is really, really natural, and I absolutely love this wig. It is so simple. It is so throw on and go. It's really not a need to do a tutorial or anything or installation with this wig. But let me show you what's in the inside. You have two combs on the side right here. There's a comb at the back with an adjustable strap. And there's also another strap to where you can wear it, quote, unquote, glueless or just to hold it down a little tighter there are some highlights up in here i'm not gonna wear a cap excuse that hair it needs to be rebraided so we're just gonna slap this straight on and guys look at this i only really just have to comb through it that's it it's already flat ironed and everything but i'm just gonna go the extra mile and make sure that everything is on flat flat everything is really really neat so i'm gonna start with a wax stick i'm just gonna put this at the top don't put it too much towards the bottom because you still want your bottom to have volume or body rather so i just brush this out with a bristle brush um just a plain one dollar brush you can get from your local beauty supply this wig is just bum, guys. It is really, really bum. I love the color. I love the length. I have a lot of bang wigs, but I don't have any this length. I'm just going to spray some hairspray to make sure I don't have any flyaways and to make sure this top lay flat. I'm really into that laying flat because when you guys get into this video, you're going to see, baby, I used to do the full. My hair used to be so big and it wasn't cut right. Uh, and I thought I was cute in the mug. But anyway, we're just going to go ahead and flat iron this. Like I said, it doesn't take much work at all. But you guys can see there are a few indentions in the front right here. So I'm just trying to flatten that out. Now, there was a little bit like over here on the side i couldn't figure out if i wanted to go ahead and curl it cut it a little more or just leave it like that so behind camera i am going to cut that but i might get should to do it right there so i don't mess it up just cut that on into the bangs you get what i'm saying but as of right now we're just gonna brush it down and make it work now i don't know anywhere you can get this flat iron anymore i was sent this flat iron years ago and i love it because it has a hot comb on the outside so i'm just going through it again and that's it guys and you really didn't even have to do any of that i'm just extra and needed to show y'all this bum hair so check them out they have split pay quad pay options different type of wigs everything and i will make sure i leave them below along with a discount code don't forget to check out love me hair
all right guys now that you've heard from our sponsors i will make sure i leave this beautiful bob below along with everything else like i said already so let's hop straight into the video so guys there are numerous of reasons why i am doing this video my youtube manager told me that I am really, really hard on myself, which I do agree with. It's simple things like, I recently hit 50K on Instagram, right? And I was like, why am I celebrating? I should have been at 50K. Or I should be at 100K. Like, I never stop and smell the roses because I'm always so negative. And so she was like, how about you just look over some things and see all the stuff you've accomplished and bring yourself on back to earth, okay? And this was so hard to do because I literally cried because I had to find receipts. Because if you're not a plat brat and you haven't been following me since the bad ass platinum days, you wouldn't know a lot of this stuff, right? And I was not initially a vlogger so I started out as a makeup guru I actually actually let's just gonna be honest I started out because I was at home I was in college again getting my second degree and I used to always budget shop but find some of the best things so I came on here doing like balling on a budget um, dupes all that kind of stuff and I just blew up out of nowhere and I wasn't doing it for money I was just like let me help people and so that transitioned into now I have been forced into a content creator which is a whole nother story so that's why the shift is kind of hard on me because I initially didn't start this to be a influencer I was pushed into that but it has been very lucrative and it has had its negatives too but it has been very lucrative. It has been very rewarding. Um, I've found out a lot about myself. I've literally grew up on YouTube. Like I was grown when I started. But I'm not the same person anymore. And I literally humbly, humbly paved the way for a lot of new influencers who have double, triple, quadruple my numbers now. Like I am the one who did the, the um, trial and error. I'm the one who... The companies tried sponsorships out on. I'm the one who went through the not getting paid. I'm the one who went through the this company got shadow banned. So I'm caught in the middle of it. Like I'm the one who did all of that. And now people can just come straight on and become thousandaires overnight. So yeah. So this is going to be a lengthy video. So grab your popcorn and everything. I'm going to go over another reason. There's another influence well i don't know what she would call herself she does commentary on other channels right i won't mention her because the commentary isn't always good and so i don't want it to seem like i'm promoting something negative but a lot of you guys have sent the link to me because she started mentioning me recently and you guys i was literally scared to watch because i'm going through so much in life right now the last thing i need is people coming at me over their opinion basically it's like i am grieving i'm going through menopause and a whole bunch of other stuff so i was just like man i cannot handle anything right now you get what i'm saying but she actually ended up saying positive things about me how i haven't changed how i dropped gems she did say i complain a lot and etc but like i said i can help that but it's really hard because i'm really irritable from a lot i'm going through but she said that i've stayed true to myself i haven't changed and i you know she admired that about me and i was like i have stayed true to myself and i haven't changed you know and i often look at that as like is that a good thing though i take that back my youtube pen that i got from one of the events i have changed but i have stayed true to myself i've gr okay i got COVID brain so y'all bear with me i've grown a lot I've grown a lot when I was the first little old cliff girl on her because I often say I was one of the first black beauty bloggers go back that's facts I was just a girl at old cliff everything everything I think reserved I thought that everything deserved a reaction if I felt like you did me wrong it was on camera if I felt like you scammed me it was on camera and that backfired on me a lot and I feel like that's why I'm not further then I should I 
feel like I should be. You know what I'm saying? I never took the hood out. I never, I still have it in me, but I feel like God put you in places or at the point he wants you to be at. So if I was supposed to be further, I would be. I feel like I needed to do this to humble myself. I'm unappreciative a lot. And I find myself in these situations where I'm like, I should be further. I've, I've discussed that already at the beginning. I should be further. Why isn't that me? But I'm like, girl, if you look at everything you have done, so with that being said, I feel like if you are going through a period on YouTube where you are popping, grab that motherfucker by the horn and go. It was a lot of times videos went viral. I should have kept doing that type of videos. It was a lot of time I was on everybody PR, everybody everything, and I was still doing makeup. So I didn't focus all my attention on YouTube. Mm. With that being said, I do feel like YouTube is a platform where you can be super big and everybody is watching you one day. And then like you can just phase out. You guys have seen it happen to a lot of your favorites. And so that's why I feel like God still has his hands on me because I'm still very much relevant. Yeah, I don't get the views I think I should get. Yes, I have an older channel, so I am shadow banned, meaning my subscribers are stuck. My views won't peak over a certain amount, but I'm still relevant. I'm still making great income. Um, Yeah, so I said all that to say, when if you get to a position where you got viral videos, every company is wanting to work with you, you are popping, run. At the time, I didn't see it like that because I was doing makeup. So I was at the shop doing 13 to 17 clients a day making what I can make doing one shout out right now on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just like, I can't do my clients like that or I can juggle both. And honestly, I couldn't. That's why I used to have a fireplace full of PR. Yeah, I did. Another reason why I thought this video was interesting is because recently my Instagram got deleted. Yes, there is some deep hating on me. Like, I don't, I don't got a tool with quite a few people, so I can't even narrow it down who I can think it is. Because I'm 43 years old, and what you're not going to do is just me any kind of way. If you guys follow me, you know that my Instagram got deleted recently, right? So, when my Instagram got deleted, the first thing I could think about was all of my memories. Like all of the YouTubers and the celebrities, the brands I've worked with, all those photos are gone. Well, I still got some of them on like my personal Facebook and stuff. All of the everything is just swiped my memories. I'm like, that's the only thing I was worried about because it's easy to rebuild. But how easy is it to get Makeup Forever to refollow you? Sound Fine to refollow you? The makeup, like I worked for that. You get what I'm saying? So... That's the only reason why after I got out of my little funk, my son hearing and etc. I was like, uh, I kind of do want my Instagram back because there are a lot of memories on there. There are a lot of people and companies that follow me that I just appreciate that. I went back to find the proof for this video, guys. And I have took pictures with so many people. Patrick Star, Sam Fine, so many celebrities, so many celebrities, guys. My first celebrity job was Mama D from Love and Hip Hop, and I never took any more after that. That wasn't for me. Everybody goal is to be a celebrity style, a celebrity makeup artist. No, I, I have a family. I valued my loyal customers. I wasn't going to drop my 17 clients that day to go do one celebrity for free for a shout out. I just, that wasn't the lifestyle. So, ooh, come on, Glow. This is my new oil I just made at Jeffrey Spencer, guys. <laughs> Let's see if we can get it on the market, all right? So anyway, um, I just didn't know my focus, and I was just hustling at the time. Um, I've been through a lot in life, and I just didn't want to go broke again. And at the time, doing makeup was more lucrative than YouTube. So I thought, once I quit makeup and was able to focus on YouTube, I'm literally making like 30 times the amount I made doing makeup. No joke. I also felt like I should do this video because here lately I feel, I've been feeling like I want to rebrand. But I've rebranded before and regretted it. You guys know I started out a whole nother name and I changed my name and I lost a lot of people when I did that. I did. They couldn't find me. They thought I deleted my page. They thought, and I, it was like the biggest regret of my life, but my old name had a curse word in it. And I wanted to be able to like advertise in a church banquet and stuff. Like, I mean, banquet. 
church i wanted to be able to advertise in like the church bulletins and stuff you can't do that with no dang on cuss word in your name and it just wasn't professional but at the time uh, that name got me so far still i was still in like essence magazine and everything but i just felt like i still feel like now i should just be nikki darton instead of platinum d but i'm so scared because that first time i switched people was like confused as heck couldn't find me and i lost a lot of views and stuff so before i get into everything i've accomplished just know your girl platinum d is gonna be tuning her own horn a lot so i'm gonna sound like soldier boy a lot i was the first two i was the first two I was the first two. You're going to hear that a lot. But it's no cap in it. It's the truth. Um, A lot of you guys often say in my comments and under my videos, you should be way further. You should be up there with this person. You should be up there. And I, I know you guys are not doing it from a bad place, but it's really like an insult because I won't say an insult, but it's kind of like heartbreaking because maybe I should, but we all got our own path. Um, it's never too late to start over, rebrand, and whatever. Those people might have I've had a, those people might have had opportunities that I didn't. They might stay places like LA and stuff where all the brands and stuff were at, so they had better. Those people might have been a little bit more polished than me. Those people, this might have been what they wanted to do. Remember, I said I was pushed into this. I was a makeup artist. First of all, I was a pre-law student, then a makeup artist, and I was pushed to, into the beauty influencer world. With that being said, because I don't want it to sound like I am being, I am um, complaining, I'm very grateful. A lot of you guys have saved my life. When I was sick, you guys are the one that told me what to go in and ask the doctor to check and etc. Every business I've ever had from selling earrings to clothes to collabs, you guys came through and saw me. I've never had something that didn't sell out. I've never had something. I've had a couple of meeting griefs that flop, but we'll get to that. So let's just get to it. Let's just get to it. So I do have my notes. So if you see me looking down, that's why. I literally tried to count and I have worked with over 300 brands from makeup to clothes to skincare to house items 300 there was a point of time I was getting so much PR and I would see y'all gossiping on them little gossip sites they send her all this stuff she don't even be opening she just be throwing it on camera y'all it's only one me and you do you hear me say I had a whole nother job kids wife a whole bunch of other stuff going on you y'all don't understand when you get PR and I'm not I'm gonna try not to be so long winded so that this video won't be so long but my vlogs be an hour long so we got a minute right a lot of those companies are the same company so if makeup forever I'm just using their name because my brush is right here makeup forever contacts me and say can we add you to our PR sure makeup forever might be linked to six of the companies so all six of them companies got your info too so that's why when you hear us say i don't know how they got our information it's kind of scary but that's why you need a pill box too unless you really really trust these companies also a lot of the pr reps for a lot of these companies change a lot and they're regular degular smeggler people like all of us so if they work for makeup by platinum and Makeup by Platinum pissed them off and they go and work for Platinum D. Platinum D pissed them off. They go work for Come To Me by Nikki. They taking your information because they the one that reached out to get you on those PR lists. So that's why you need a, a um, PO box because you never know who's dealing with your information and stuff too. It can be a regular degular person like me who applied for the job and got it. You get it? Oh, okay, I'm trying not to cry. I'm not going to cry this video. I was literally on YouTube probably two months and got my first collab. Thumbs up if you remember The Body Needs. I was addicted to their pigments and spectrum. So The Body Needs, I would buy every... I started looking for MAC dupes, right? And then they had their own powders that was a little bit better than MAC. Hold on, because baby, what I say? I got what? Receipts. Guys, I still have it. Anytime I've ever collaborated with a brand, of course I'm going to still have the stuff. So here it is. Oh my gosh, this is so nostalgic. It was a blush called Darling Nikki. 
thumbs up if you still got this blush because stop playing with me i was the first ever youtuber to have a collab with a, co a, a company say i wouldn't <laughs> what happened was i used to use one of their eyeshadows that was this pinky hue as a blush so they was like how about we just give you a blush and did so let's move into shop miss a shop miss a is the first brand i ever broke the internet with everyone this is platinum and as you can tell from the title of the video i'm like super excited about this video okay everything on this website is a dollar like so it's a one dollar website they sent me a package and we broke the internet for like two days their browser broke their setting broke everything just broke you couldn't function everybody was messaging me like i'm trying to shop and they couldn't shop miss a was hitting me like we don't know what's going on so yeah i, I do think i'm the first person that ever broke the internet like that and do uh-huh and i'm not just talking i have proof of the actual owners saying that honey here are the owners y'all want to say hey to my subscribers <laughs> how do you remember me tell them you broke the internet <laughs> <laughs> so yeah speaking of that i was the first influencer to help them open their storefront at their very first location in grapevine texas which is so crazy now because they have over like 10 locations now arlington they have a couple in Houston. they have them everywhere now okay and that meet and greet was so fun they had food for us they had gift cards for us i went out to eat with ashley devonna after that and everything it was just a blast so yeah shout out to shop miss a <laughs> i was one of the head ambassadors for the makeup show dallas every single year they were here i want to say they were here three years that allowed me to meet so many people um i used to run into y'all and y'all would have my non-violent face beater t-shirts on y'all remember that that's when i first met danessa myricks that's where i first met everybody like celebrity makeup artists everybody um and i got so many opportunities doing that i got to work with so many brands i got to meet so many people and i will be forever humble for that would i do it again nah because i'm not really into makeup like that anymore but never say never nope, it's not nikki it's sam fine i'm with nikki though and you gotta go to her youtube channel to check out my interview platinum d I was in Essence Magazine four times, honey. Four. Four. Here is that right here. Makeovers. The best of. Four freaking times. Can we move on? Yes, I was one of the first makeup artists in Essence Magazine from Instagram. <laughs> I met Charlotte Tilbury. I met Charlotte Tilbury before Charlotte Tilbury covered carried our color complexion items i went to a meet and greet she didn't even have anything for me it was in neiman's nordstrom's she pulled me aside and was like i'm gonna work on that and she did and what's crazy is I don't, i'm not even on her pr anymore she comes to town now i don't even get invited to the events but i was invited to that one and i met her i went to the sally beauty black creators convention and when i said it was a whole weekend thing it was my birthday weekend they took care of us we get to get anything out of Listen, they literally set up a Sally Beauty store in this convention and we went crazy. I tried to find that live. Y'all, we went crazy. It was almost embarrassing. I had over 30 bags to get back to my hotel room. And the people who didn't live in Dallas, because I met everybody there. Oh my gosh, I met so many creatives there. And I was looking like, why am I? A lot of these times, I was the only black influencer there. Or the only black plus size influencer. So I felt like a lot of these events, they like invited me to fill a, 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 a void like they didn't want anybody to be able to say mm, they didn't have nobody there this 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 but i was there the hour and the dinner that they have for us if i still full body i'll show you guys an outfit of the day but as of right now i have to try to get where i'm going so i'm here just a little chicken. It's cocktail hour. This can say hey. Hey everybody. <laughs> Here's my bitch. So many beautiful women in here. With this group of amazing, amazing 
beauty influencers. Yeah. Just yourself over the bird. Oh, basically like right here. So just have them taking over the beauty. Right. 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 Right the whole weekend. We got to do so much. They took us to the rodeo. They took, man, we had a blast. And I think I was like, me and my nail tech at the time was the only two people that's from Dallas that was there. Everybody else, they had to fly in. So we kind of was like, this kind of unfair because they flew in, got them rooms and stuff. And we was already in Dallas. <laughs> But I had a blast. Um, Sephora VIP. I was opening up all of their new stores with the the marketing director, the head man, and everything over Sephora. Um, I just had a good rodeo, you guys. Um, been in the stores before they open, while they open, they fed us gift cards. Ooh, just everything. Like I've met with the top of the top of Sephora and that was before sephora squad days and all that like it's been fun y'all it's been fun multiple sold out makeup classes every single makeup class i had sold out i always tell y'all when i talk about shady shay she used to be at every class the girl had just had a baby two weeks ago and was at one of my classes but i started out having these mixers and then i started breaking it down per section like this class is eyes this class is lips not i never did lips there's nothing to explain foundation this is eyebrows and every single class would sell out in like seven minutes. I got to meet the owners of Beautylish at, what hotel was that? Turtle Creek, the mountain at Turtle Creek in Dallas? Yeah, like literally the a Beautylish. Hanging with them, eating with them, going out with them. And I'm still on their PR because that's where my um Good Molecules PR come from. So shout out to them. A lot of these companies dropped me. Especially when I stopped doing makeup or when the pandemic hit, a lot of companies just stopped sending out PR, period. But I am still on theirs. So, shout out to Beautylish. I went viral for inappropriate stuff. Y'all remember that? Yeah, I remember. When I was at the Wax Museum in Vegas with the Nicki Minaj figure. I didn't understand why I went viral. I'm like, man, they is tripping. They said we was doing inappropriate. Y'all was on MTV, BET. I just roll a clip. If you guys haven't heard, I'm all over the news. And so what I decided to do was address this so you guys can hear from the horse's mouth, okay, um, what's going on. This is everywhere. I've seen my picture on MTV, Media Takeout, CNN, um, UK Daily, New York Times, as well as it's on the news here. It's everywhere. Along with a few more other people, it's not just me. Um, about the Nicki Minaj um, wax figure. Now, you guys know that me and Bay recently went to Vegas. I think it was last week. And we had fun just like everybody else doing the wax mu museum. But, of course, because of the position that Nicki Minaj is in and the poses that we did with the figure, it created an or uproar, basically. <laughs> Viral play. <laughs> And that led to like them giving me free passes to go anytime I want to go. So I went to the one in New York. I went, we just came from the one in Vegas, but I didn't even try to use the free pass. That's weird now that I think about it. <laughs> I've worked with Ipsy, Jen Beauty, and Michelle Fun very closely numerous of times. Anytime there was an Ipsy or Jen Beauty, not BeautyCon, don't get it confused, I was brought in. I was brought in. I didn't have to wait in line. I got to go straight up to the brands. I got to work with the brands. I got to record with them. I was all over their website. That's just strange to me because at the time I was like, I'm working, I'm working, I'm working. And now that I look back, I'm like, that's big, Nikki. That's freaking big. And I had fun too. But I used to have some fun in LA. Did. Same with Fame Expo. Now, I only went to two Fame Expos, um, but I did get to do an L.A. Girl commercial at one of them. So, I just pop in a little clip of where I was in a commercial. I think me and CQ Beauty got to do it. 
so much fun so shout out to fame expo and la girl i still get pr from them <laughs> I was Oprah first reviewer Oprah cosmetics I literally was the first person to review them I literally was got to meet the owners too at multiple parties they took care of me multiple times I and now I'm not even on APR anymore I don't even know if Oprah still has PR like I used to get everything Christmas gifts and everything and I just haven't heard anything from them but I kind of understood it because they like we ain't gonna keep sending you this stuff and you not doing it makeup or I kind of phased out for a minute I kind of went through this phase where I just didn't know what I was doing honestly and I was just trying to survive the owners are Oprah I got to host my very first meet and greet in Vegas yes I was out someone flew me in roomed me everything we had a blast didn't that many people show up though i want to say like four or five but it was vegas and i had fun i went to see mariah carey and everything <laughs> camera ready cosmetics used to only be online they opened a the store in dallas i got to open it with them boom there's a picture i got to do dinner multiple times with city color cosmetics Ugh. They used to take care of me so well, but I'm not on their PR. Their rep has left and a whole bunch of stuff, but I did get to go to dinner with them. I did. And it was good. <laughs> we found on the second page, y'all. Same with Beautycon. Now, Beautycon Dallas came here twice. I, it wasn't my cup of tea. Um, I kind of feel like they show favoritism, and that's fine. I understand. If you invite me out as a um, blogger or YouTuber don't have certain ones over here getting this and i'm here i didn't like that vibe i never got that vibe out of gen beauty i never got that vibe out of gen beauty so beauty con wasn't my thing so that's why when they had beauty con la beauty con new york and they start back having them i never went out of town youtube creator day so one of the first times i went to la for gen beauty youtube invited me to their headquarters they fed me gave me tips and tricks just made me feel real good and that was like one of many times they brought me in after that it was like a rippling effect and i don't even know how i was getting on the list but i was very appreciative and i was going to Houston Creator Day. Y'all remember that I actually took Shug. We went to the beach and everything. I don't know if some of this stuff is up. I deleted a lot of blogs and stuff that didn't get numbers or just was on here for whatever reason. But yeah, I went to the Creator Day in Houston like two weeks later. I've been on the local news working as a makeup artist. That wasn't my cup of tea though, honey. And was it? Nah. I had to get up too dang early. Like the news started at five. So what time you think we had to be there? Exactly. I was invited to Austin with YouTube Creator Day again. And we actually got to tour the Google Fiber headquarters. That trip was so dang fun. Y'all remember that? Remember when I used to have color schemes? I wore the same color. This one I had on blue. Child, I had so much fun. I, I missed them days. That's when YouTube was really fun. 
not saying it's not now but now it's just so much money involved competition shadiness it's just whoa but yeah i literally had a blast guys so i'm headed to austin i have some things to do with youtube i have to record with youtube i have a creator day a creator lab a cocktail party and some more things youtube has planned i am at google austin youtube brought me to google i just got done filming there the little google guys i had to go move my car i was about to get towed and YouTube said they wasn't paying that towing bill, honey. So, going back to get my items, I'm actually done recording for the day. This is the network I'm filming with today. And I'm here with YouTube, guys. So, let's go in so you guys can see this set. But let me hear it because snacks. They provided snacks. This is the representative from El Ray Network over here. She's on her phone. Say hey. <laughs> Let's see what they have for breakfast. Uh, oh, do they have Nutri-Grain bars? No. We're actually on Google right now. Waiting on lunch. Look, I need this in my living room. So, yeah. I'm sitting in the front of the class. Y'all know I'm extra nerdy. That led to Jen Beauty San Fran. I've been to Jen Beauty New York, LA. San Fran, all of them. Anytime they have them, they brought me in. This trip, I had green on. This was not one of my favorite gym beauties, but the parties and stuff used to be lit, and I can't even lie, we used to be partying with the brands. I was there. <laughs> there was a point of time, I was taking over everybody's Snapchat. Y'all remember that? Uh, for a brand to trust you, give you their login information, and allow you to promote yourself and expose, like, it'll be like four eight-hour takeovers. So let's start with those. I started over. I started with Octoly, which is now Octoly is named Skeepers now. Um, I took over Absolute New York. Next, I then took over Ipsy as one of their head ambassadors. I then took over Elf Cosmetics. <laughs> I then took over Octrelease again. <laughs> then I got like one of the best opportunities of my lifetime, guys. I got to go to LA and record with Ipsy and make up forever. Y'all remember that video? Uh, that was my first time like being on a professional camera with the professional um, box and me being able to see myself and the backdrops. Oh my gosh, I had so much fun. And I have a lip swatch video for you all today. You guys know Makeup Forever has been hooking me up, right? And they sent me over two different collections, so I just decided to do them both in a video. And then that same day, I got to take over, record with Absolute Beauty as well. So here's a clip of that. Hey guys, I'm in Los Angeles at the Ipsy Studio. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I can get used to this. This is the life. <laughs> but I am going to be doing some swatches of some products from Absolute New York. You guys know I love them. First of all, let's just take it back a little bit. The first time I ever recorded with Ipsy was at Gym Beauty and I swatched Absolute New York products. So. When I was asked to come back and record today, I had to represent Absolute again. And then, even though I don't work with them anymore because it's bittersweet, I was one of Fashion Nova Plus ambassadors. Did I say that right? No. I was one of the first influencers on the Fashion Nova Plus ambassador team. I started it with their plus size jeans. Mm -hmm. Now... Fashion Over Curve is big. But y'all remember when Fashion Over first started, they didn't even have stuff for us. And didn't at all. So I started that campaign. I got to record with Absolute New York at 
gym beauty which was so much fun i was so nervous y'all but yeah that was fun as well <laughs> i'm gonna be able to edit this oh okay <laughs> do y'all have wipes okay Hi guys, I'm here at Gym Beauty NYC and I'm in the Absolute booth and look what I got. So I just wanted to show you guys everything that's inside of here, sort of kind of like a little unboxing. That leads to me, I went to LA for two things in one, to go to the BT Awards and to go to the Zahar. It was a fashion line at the time, um, Fairies Day. It was like a model thing, they were trying to find models for the website or their brand and it was like a whirlwind um, events. If I have these videos still up, I'll link them right here as I'm talking about them. Because I stayed in three hotels in one weekend. I literally end up late to the BET Awards because I got a deal with Zahar and had to do a radio interview that morning. And the BET Awards, that was good. Zahar started out good, which led to me getting my own line because even though I wasn't a model, she liked my personality and stuff. So that led to her flying me out a lot. Then she saw the selling power I had and that led to me supposedly getting my own bra and shaper line which started out as a clothing line. Hey guys, Nikki here and I am teaming up with Zahar to bring you guys some great quality, trendy, supportive bra and shapewear. Coming soon. Um, and then I stopped working with the company after like nine months, so I never did the broader shaper line. So that's how Come to Me by Nikki came into play. I have been the head ambassador for Poshmark Dallas. Every time they've had an event, I've went. And I don't even use Poshmark anymore because they take such a big cut. But I used to be a beauty influencer for them on YouTube, and I used to be a head, I forgot what they called it. Um, expert Poshmark expert and did all the events with them here in Dallas. I was invited to the women of YouTube. That was one of the best YouTube events I've ever been to. I met Glamazante there. A lot of people there. Um, we got to touch and talk to YouTube managers to see how that go and they high y'all. They be charging a lot. The type that was there. Um, and YouTube just be taking care of you like the whole weekend. It be events like the whole weekend and it just, just be so fun. Indeed. <laughs> that led to me having my own collaboration, child. It's right here. With Bihu Beauty. Bihu Beauty. Called OCT. I have it in here, guys. This is the box. Because I don't ever want to lose this box. Y'all see it? Um, It was a metallic... It was a metallic purple lipstick. I did a beauty's favorite. I named one of their lipsticks. And so they was like, how about you? Let's just collab. And they wanted me to do the lipstick that I said was my favorite, but a metallic version. But I didn't like it metallic. So that's how I ended up with that. And that was like, bum, bum. Like, that was another huge brand deal that I'm forever, ever grateful for. I was literally scared to do that because it seemed like for a minute, anytime you did a big collaboration or something, people did smear campaigns on you. They want to pull up everything and, oh my gosh, like, Chaz, just makeup and you want to pull up when I uh, had a fight in the third grade? Like, so I was really scared because I didn't want that much attention on me, but it ended up turning out really, really well. All the ooh, ooh, ooh. Hey, hey. <laughs> Shake it up, shake it up. <laughs> hey guys, Nikki here, and this is a very exciting video for me and a lot of you guys. You've been waiting on this video for me. And honestly, I just don't know where to start, okay? So, in case you're new to my channel or you are here to hear the information about my collab with Be You Beauty. Child, I don't want the dinner with Maybelline, indeed. And had a blast and met so many of y'all and they gave us good drinks maybellinis is what they called them and good food just a good old time we on the second third page y'all whoo i've done multiple career days the kids love them from platinum y'all multiple schools judges 
courtrooms multiple what a blessing i be a career day and it be firefighters judges and then there's you the youtuber the makeup artist but i catch them kids attention too you get what i'm saying it is what it is I went to dinner or lunch with Juice Beauty, and that was scary because, like, two months prior, I did a review, and it did not go well. At all. The foundation down there looked white on me, but they still invited me to dinner and took care of me. A lot of companies dropped me when I told the truth because I was the reviewer that told the truth about that makeup. BH Cosmetics was one of them. They got mad. I didn't like one of their foundations. They, I didn't know they was mad at the time. They hit me up. They was like, what can we change? What can we do? And then they dropped me. I never got another PR package. I never got another payment. I've risked a lot being honest for y'all, but a lot of people have gotten far line to y'all. But I value y'all money, so we're going to move on. I got nominated for Makeup of the Year. Probably one of my last years doing makeup. I didn't win, but it was fun. I didn't win that award, but I did win another one. I'll insert that one right here. <laughs> I got, I was one of the first reviewers, content creators that Mix Blend Bar invited to make their own lipstick and stuff. And they're right next door to the scent room. So they're very popular now, but yeah, I was the first influencer that went in there. They allowed me to bring one person. I took another influencer. It's an a, a influencer called Jaleesa. We were always the only two black influencers at everything. So if we got invited to an event, we would always take each other as a plus one. Back to Gen Beauty. We was in Gen Beauty LA one time. And we were all sectioned. And it was a handful of black girls. And there was one sitting over there by herself. And I'm just like, oh, I feel so sorry. So my friendly tail went over there. Child, I didn't know she was the guest speaker. I just thought she was there like us. Baby, she got up on that panel. I was like, oh, okay. Found out it was Shot Diva, Olympic gold medalist. But it paid off because for me being nice, going over there asking her, hey, come sit with us. She let me kick it with her the whole weekend. When I say she got VIP treatment, the black cars, no lines, no... Ah, she was letting me use her uber to get around like and i just saw her recently she lives here so that's like so be nice my point is saying that like i was just like you don't have to be over there by yourself i didn't even know who she was y'all turns out she got up on that panel I was like oh shoot my bad my bad honey <laughs> but now i know her and she took care of me i got to go to dinner with the kevin aquan family it started out, we got to see his movie premiere, right? His movie premiere turned into his family taking some of us to dinner and we had a blast. Like, wow. Wow. The same clothing line I'm discussing that I know that you guys know it went sour. Um, They're not even a clothing line anymore. I got to collab with my baby. We did a mother-daughter line. That was my daughter's first time in L.A. They took care of me and my baby really good. That's what I don't understand. When they went sour, they hurt me to pieces because that company really took care of me. But yeah, anyway, it exposed my baby to light. It wasn't my baby first time flying or anything, but it was her first time in LA and we had a grand old time. I sprung my ankle that trip. Y'all remember that? And still kept modeling. And then came back to Dallas and went straight to doing makeup clients. Like, I used to have some going me, honey. I did. I was invited to Miami when Ofra Cosmetic rebranded. <laughs> I slept most of that trip. I don't even remember it. Like, as soon as I got off the plane, I was like, I'm going to shower. I'm going to go tour Miami. That was my first time in Miami. Girl, I woke up. It was 10 o'clock at night. I wasn't going to go out by myself, so I just slept on. Got up the next day. Went to the event. Had fun. That event was so fun. And it was so... Like, they had little things set up where you could see every stage of Ofra Cosmetics. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I was here for this. I lunched this with them. It was deep. It was deep. I went to dinner with Laura Geller, which I never worked with Laura Geller. They just came to town. And it was at that hotel called, what is it? Jule? Jewel in Dallas? Baby, with that big eyeball. Baby, they fed us too good. Goodie bags. They had us personalized makeup bags and everything. So... You know, little stuff like that. 
I got a sponsorship with Laser Away. They did 10, they gave me an option to choose like cool sculpting, lip plump. Y'all know I don't mess with my body. Although I feel like I should and y'all feel like I should. I don't, I really don't. I just feel like I'm 40 plus and I've been making it this long. Why the heck I'm finna go suck and nip and tuck it now, baby. Okay, anyway, they did this right. Where is the girl? That's the wrong breast. They did this right here. Tattoo removal. I had one more session to go and didn't go back. I don't know what, I, it just started getting annoying to me, you know? But they did remove this tattoo as much as they could because that mug was black and ghetto. <laughs> real, real dark. Real, real dark. I got to go to the Women of YouTube again. This was in L.A. Maybe this was the one I met Glamazon Tan and stuff. Or she was at this one too. I went to that headquarters so many times, y'all. And YouTube take care of you when you come. It's like... I keep saying that all weekend. <laughs> I had my first hair meet and greet company. I had my first meet and greet with a hair company called a Virgin Hair Fantasies, I want to say. Um, I've never been a hair influencer, but been reviewing wigs my whole career because that's where the money come in, mostly for African American women, right? That meet and greet was so fun. They asked me, did I know other influencers? There was another one here. Y'all know Missy, but she wasn't within her budget. And so I was like, I can pull in a friend. I pulled in Miss Creative Diva. I pulled her in a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. Um, because I just felt like at the time, um, For a minute, she was new here, and I was just really trying to help put her on. That's just my spirit. But anyway, yeah, that meet and greet was fun. <laughs> I got to go to a mansion with Makeup Geek, guys. And what's strange about that is I had applied to be on Makeup Geek PR, and the rep told me I wasn't good enough. She did. She was like, you're not. Mm -mm. And that's exactly what she said. You're not good enough. Try again in like a year or two. I never tried again, but guess who was reaching out like a year or two later? Makeup geek. <laughs> I didn't have to try again. <laughs> y'all found me. Because y'all don't see me on Elf, Ofra, um, Makeup Forever, everybody page now. <laughs> you see how the world works, but you know, you, you know, you know. So anyway, I got to go to the Makeup Geek Mansion. No, no, I didn't. She had an event in Houston. Child, that event was so fun. Too fun. We had to wear like pajamas. We had to wear pajamas because it was a mansion party. We had so much fun. That trip was fun. It was my first time going to Turkey Leg Hut. Just, I just got some good ass memories, y'all. I hosted two meet and greets with Dillard's. Neither one of them was in Dallas though. So they were in a town called Den, which is 45 minutes outside of Dallas. It's actually where I went to undergrad school. I went to Texas Woman University. And I thank you so much to them because neither neither time did it pull a crowd for one den as far as hell. And then it's kind of country, so it's not going to be that many people there. But they trusted me to come back a second time. And that time I put in Moody. I put in Miss Creative Diva again. Still wasn't a crowd. I thought that pulling in more influences would bring the crowd. But it just was the area, guys. If I do one right here up the street for me, it'll be packed out. But it just... It's just nostalgic that I got to do one in Dillard's. So, moving on to now. Because what has happened is makeup phased out. And so, it kind of pushed me into a vlogger. Yes, I do have a makeup channel again. Because I just feel like makeup is my first love. Um, Now, we're going to get to more what you guys might know as of now. <laughs> Why did I say it like that? Because all of this stuff was pre my vlogging days. That's why I don't have footage and memories for most of it. That transitions into me getting my own soap with a company, Naturalistic Beauty Con, called Plat Breasts to get you some money. I'll go get y'all some soap for y'all, y'all, y'all girl down there, okay? That transitioned into me having another collaboration with her. That transitioned into me coming out with a yoni towel to use the soap with. It's just been a good ride. You get what I'm saying? It's been a good ride. You guys know, pandemic hit. I sold out 
girl, I saw so much hand sanitizer. That's when everybody didn't have it, and I had a bright idea, ding, make some, and cotton candy, Japanese cherry blossom, lemongrass, and then everybody started selling it, so I stopped. Because the money went from me making like thousands and thousands a day to, I could just go in Bath and Body Work and get some. I could just go in Walmart and get some now. You know, when I was selling it, it was a shortage too, so, yeah. We all know I had my, I, not had, I got my own shaper line. Cause I don't be snatched on them pictures. Okay, stop playing. And I'm just gonna stop right there. Y'all get the point. Huh? Do y'all get the point? It's so many brands and companies that I started. Like, I remember Sherry's Berry. No, okay, let's let's just go back. I remember Retro Retro PCS? Retro Retro City Sunglasses. What the heck am I talking about? Talking about the phone company. Retro City Sunglasses been the first company that sent me something. I used to love them sunglasses. Are they still in business, y'all? I remember Sherry's Berries being my first paid sponsorship. Guess how much I got paid? $50. It was me, Miss Diva Like, Pretty Girl, and I remember all of us getting these strawberries and was so happy. That was my first ever paid sponsorship and I was so happy over that $50 because I had been showing all that other stuff for free. So $50, I was like, if, I was just like, at least I can go buy me some makeup. <laughs> you know, $50? Wow. I've done a lot of work for free, guys. Everything isn't about money. I've done a lot of work for free to get ahead or to get my name out there. So I want you up and coming YouTubers to remember that as well. This video been long enough. Look how my bracelet just match match my my my, my dress, y'all, and my watch. I said all that to say because I often feel like it's a lot of like I'm in the era where I'm still an influencer for when I was an influencer. Probably the only one I can name like straight off the top of my head is Jackie. And she's really far. So if I was to like look at Jackie life and look at mine, it's like I ain't done nothing. But at the same time, my path is my path, and I'm very, very proud of myself still. Very, very, very. So, I'm going through this appreciate life, appreciate, be grateful phase right now. And I just really felt like I needed this. I needed to see all of this over again. I needed to do this video to tell you guys to keep pushing and stop comparing because I look at myself like, man, these girls starting YouTube and getting 70, 80,000 views. Guess what, though? It, it, it be making me feel like I'm not enough or quit, you know? But um, I always tell you guys, as long as it's lucrative and it's benefiting me, I will be here. I might not say full time, like, because honestly... I'm dipping into something else right now that I can't talk about um, that has something to do with my degree. So, um, I do have other sources of income, properties and all that. So, if you're on here, make the best out of it and save. Because, like I said, when my Instagram got deleted, any of your platforms can get deleted at any moment. And you got to have a backup plan. So, this video has been long enough. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If I forgot something and you remember, let me know. Um, if you have any questions about anything, leave them below. And I hope this video brought you just as much joy as it brought me. I'm proud of myself that I didn't cry. Okay? I love you guys. And don't forget to check out Love Me Hair. Y'all know that's my favorite style. I love me a bang wig, child. And then I just throw it on and go almost. I'll talk to y'all in my next video. Peace.